I know about it, and I won't take too long explaining it so that we can uh, carry on with the program. But there's something very important to know, some principles that, see, people, like in the last 40 years, they haven't been principled on how to think morally about things. So that a lot of people, like Al said, think, well, but this has increased my child's desire to read. Better your child be illiterate than read garbage on a moral level. And this is why. And there are so many things out there, they wouldn't be illiterate anyway. The Catholic Church has such a treasure of lives of the saints. These children's books, I don't know if you've seen them about the lives of the saints. That's what's going to make your children heroes in the spiritual life. Saints. But, getting to the Harry Potter issue, the difference between something like Harry Potter and, say, Lord of the Rings, you know, J.R. Tolkien or C.S. Lewis stuff, not only the fact that both of them were Christians, one, you know, Protestant, one Catholic, and by the way, J.R. Tolkien said such things to his children like, if you want to find romance in your spiritual life, go to the Eucharist. That should say a lot about what that man is going to write. And as we know, C.S. Lewis, though not a Catholic, was a very devout Christian and wrote wonderful things. But the difference is about means and ends. So that when you see certain mythological things and fantasy worlds created in these kind of stories, the power that's being used by, let's just say, the wizards or whatever, you know, the, the, the people who have these significant powers with their cloaks and their wands and their swords and all that, how is it being used and what is the means that they're going about to achieve their desired good? And I don't mean to get too theological here, but you kind of have to, you know, because every Christian is called to be a theologian whether you like it or not. You really are. You're called to know this. The Lord expects it of you. You can read the signs of the times, but you, you don't know, you know this, he says in Matthew. Here's the difference. In Harry Potter, all these people have different kinds of powers. And they have a good that they're desiring to achieve. And it can appear to be a real good. You know, to make someone else happy. Or to acquire this particular thing, which seems to be a good. But you know what? If the means that you go about to acquire it is through using your power to manipulate, deceive, and lie, your end is bad also. And that's a fundamental problem. Because when children start to read that and they take on that mentality, which is all over the media, you know, it, it purports a good. We all want to be happy. That's the way we're made. But going about the way that we do it will determine whether or not we're really going to be happy. That's a big difference. So that if I want peace in the world, and my way to do it is to kill everyone but me and my friend, that's going to be a problem. Or if you take it down, you might say, well, that's extreme, Father. Take it down to even lesser things. I want to do this. Good. It appears to be good. But the means that I'm going to do it is to, well, just tell little fibs. Or to use something that I have, you know, in this particular way to achieve it. You won't. Your good will, your, your apparent good will not be a good at all. And you'll actually find yourself being worse when you get to that desired end. That's what makes the difference between fantasy done from a Christian perspective, because there's nothing wrong with such stories, but it has to be that the powers that a person has, even in a fantasy world, have to be used in a right way. And the good that is being achieved has to come about in a good way. The means are good. That is Christian moral principles. And that's what makes heroes out of those who, in desiring to attain the real good, are willing to die, to sacrifice, to forgive, to be merciful, to be compassionate, to love, to be martyred. That's the difference. Reading Harry Potter is not going to make your children saints. It's going to warp their thinking so that when they go about in their careers, in their jobs, the principles are gone. And everything will be about, there's something that I see to be a good, and it might actually be a good. But if you go about it in the wrong way, through using your powers that you have, if you're a CEO, to get more money, but you're doing some shady business, oh, you might acquire your good, but it won't be a good. You will have sold your soul in getting it. 
And it won't be heaven you acquire, but hell. That's the difference when Jesus says to the Pharisees, you strive all your powers in going out and trying to make disciples, but you make demons in what you're doing. Because they don't give them sound principles. You say one thing and do another. Or you, what you appear to do is to be good. On the outside, you look like, you know, perfect. But inside, you're full of, you know, filth and hypocrisy. That's the difference. And, you know, if you even look at the roots of a lot of these things, this woman who wrote such things, you know she was involved in the occult. You think that's not going to come through? Through the books? Of course it is. And, you know, look, if the whole world is going out and buying all this stuff and hurrah, hurrah, and they're waiting out in lines for like two days to buy the books, put on your lenses of Christianity and the wisdom of the cross and look to see who's being deceived. If the whole masses are flooding to this, is it the way of the cross? That's where we have to be running to. That's where we have to look at everything through, the wisdom of the cross. Believe me, I know good people, great people, love them. They love God a lot. Good people. But on this issue, they don't see it. And they think it's fine. And the priests tell them it's fine. And the sisters tell them it's fine. But I want to tell you, it's not fine. It's a subtlety. Just like in the sitcoms, we allow ourselves to say, oh, but they're just, it's only occasional lies that they tell, or little fibs, or they use their powers in that way. I mean, can't we just overlook that for the sake of the greater story and that their people are learning to read and all of that? No. That's the subtlety of Satan. It really is. Just like I said today or yesterday with like sitcoms and all that, it's the same thing. Father, we just want to be entertained. Lighten up. You know, we just want to laugh at the sitcoms. The sitcoms are brainwashing the world. The media is brainwashing it. Everyone just wants to overlook all the stuff that throws moral principles out. So that now we can have people saying, I wouldn't have an abortion, but if somebody else wants to, that's, all, that's their deal, you know? No, it's not. See, that's where, we, that's where it ends, logically. It becomes a private morality. It's a good that I want to achieve. What's wrong with that, Father? I mean, nobody's perfect, right? We're all sinners. Yeah, but we should be striving to be saints. And we should let nothing get in the way of that. Better children be illiterate and enter the kingdom of God than be great readers and writers and go to Hades. And I mean that. And I know that's a hard message. And probably a lot of you have, your kids have read all of them. Well, I just want to tell you as your brother, and as a watchman on the wall, it is my duty and responsibility to warn you when a hole is in the ground, if I don't warn you that it's there, I will be held responsible. That's why I have to tell you, as a priest and as your brother, it's not as innocent as it seems. It's subtle, and it is demonic.